Now we're very happy to have our <coughs> most popular speaker, I believe, <laughs> coming today. And his topic is interdimensionality of consciousness. Interdimensionality. <laughs> And he said, I have, this is his bio, I have been deeply interested in conscious cosmology and the study of the universe, particularly metaphysics, science, nature, and technology throughout all my life. I have been teaching computer technology since the age of 12, and I have developed a deep interest and understanding of computer logic and electronics. I spend much of my life teaching and repairing computers as well as studying spiritual ideas and their relation to the cosmos. Many of my friends call me Dan Lode or <laughs> World Bridger as my greatest passion is seeing the holographic connections and, and similarities between apparent opposite ideas the bridging and and the, an atheist idea with a spiritual one. I overall have a passion for discovering the secrets of the universe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so thank you for coming oh, yeah. today, Dan. Great, great. Um, can you can you actually pass that to see you, um, what I wrote for my topic? Yes. Um, that the piece of paper that I have. This is a little bit loud. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't usually have this because my voice is loud. loud already, and I'm just just here hearing my voice back here. Can everybody actually? I don't even know if we need this, or maybe we should turn it on. Do we need it? Do we need it? Okay, really? We have some part of the deal. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's just sort of like. I'll get used to it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what I, what I chose, like, Anne asked me to give a, a talk, and it was a bit of a short notice, and something that I love to do is to just talk about some of my favorite things in life, and uh, one of them is just understanding the idea of dimensions. So what I wrote for my topic, I wrote here, this is, this is there's no way that I could cover all this, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is what I'm passionate about. I, I, could, I could try. We will discuss the idea of dimensions and how they relate to the human experience. We will explain the physical dimensions, time dimensions, and spiritual dimensions. Systems and analogies will be used to explain parallel universes past parallel lives, remote viewing, the Mandela Effect, instantaneous manifestation, archangels, plasma life forms, limitations, and karma. We will look into the Kabbalah, tree of life, channeling mystery schools, alchemy, quantum physics, interdimensional beings, and living in fourth density and beyond. So <laughs> that's, that's what I chose. <laughs> but, but like, in 45 minutes? Yes. How about if we start with the instant manifestation? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think that's a good idea. So, so that's a lot to cover, and I'm not I'm not going to cover you know 90 percent of that. And um, it, it's so overwhelming looking at what, how I'm going to give a talk on this, and all I could do is print out some you know a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of pictures and watch videos but and then I got I realized it's so overwhelming to talk about the idea of dimensions because every culture has a different way to look at what dimensions mean and then then there's densities so that's a whole other way of looking at the universe is that where our consciousness is made up of different levels or hierarchical densities and uh, so, so it was quite overwhelming and I figured okay 
forget trying to put a talk together. We'll just make sort of an interactive experience here. And, and I'll sort of set, set the tone with just talking about where we are now and how we got here. I did want to talk about the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life. Is everybody familiar with the, the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life? Yeah, so the, the Kabbalah it is like a, an alchemical way to describe the, the processes of the universe and consciousness in the human form and the challenges that we go through. Um, so this is, this is an amazing system that there's a thousand books a year being written on the Kabbalah. And we happen to live in a three-story geodesic dome, which was Joseph Mark Cohen's dome, and he was very much into the Kabbalah. So I learned a lot about that, sort of like through osmosis, and just by hanging out with him. So you could go on and on about what this is, but we're not going to talk about this much. Um, maybe other people will talk about it if it comes up, right? Um, so I've got all these little handouts I just want to pass along for you to see some of the stuff, some of the different ways different traditions look at dimensions. And there is, there is a commonality. And I'm just going to pass that along. I'm just going to move this. I, I find that it's echoing really badly. It's because the speaker is right behind you, Dale. Okay, that might be the problem. Somebody move it over then. Who knows how to turn it down? So, um, yeah, so what I would like to do is talk about where we are now. Um, Illumina, hi. Hi. I just had this, when you mentioned dimension, yes. I had this thought, even though we're all sitting here, yes. are we all sitting in the same dimension? Um, yes and no. Yeah, and, and also, yeah. Well, it, it, we're, we're, we're sitting in the same, we're experiencing the same density, but we may be in different dimensions sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm not always here, and uh, <laughs> sometimes I'm off, you know, in a different cosmic realm, and I have to come back. Uh, this is a very exciting topic for me, and I talk to Laura about it sometimes, and uh, when I start talking about what's beyond third density, fourth density, fifth, sixth, what that looks like. And uh, I know that it can be overwhelming, but I know also a lot of people want me to talk about this as much as it is uh, super abstract, super, you know, confusing. But I, th I think it, everything is meant to be simple. And uh, if you don't understand it, or if it seems way complex to you, then you're probably not looking at it right, because I think everything is meant to be simple. Um, so I'll just start with physical dimensions. So we're kind of, phys we're, I think a lot of us are familiar with physical dimensions. And what I mean is we have like, I, th I would call zero dimension would be just the singularity or everything and nothing at the same time, or maybe a little single point. Um, so that's one way to think about everything is one. So that, or everything is nothing. So that would be kind of the zero dimension. The second dimension, physical dimension, we kind of think of a line. So you can just imagine a line maybe going off to infinity on either side, or maybe a little segment of a line. All you see is a line. So that's, that's second, that's really, yeah, we call that second dimension, where first dimension would be a dot, second dimension is a line. Third dimension, just imagine drawing that same little segment of a line and drawing it again. And then connecting that line by two lines and you end up with a square, right? So a square, you could imagine that as, so one dimension is a line, a square is two dimensions. A third dimension would be a cube. So basically this is the natural progression of dimensions. Starting with a line, moving to a square, and then moving to a cube. So the cube being three dimensions, right? So whereas with the first dimension, you only have one point. With the second dimension, you have sort of like the x dimension. And then with the second dimension, with this cube, you have x and y. Uh, so, so sorry, with a square, you have x and y. In the cube, you have x, y, and z, right? Is everybody following me with that basic idea? OK, so how do you, how do you move from a cube to the next physical dimension? Well, you could follow the same rule you did to build the cube in the first place, 
which is with the in order to see the second dimension, we went with the first dimension, took a line, draw it again, connect it, we end up with a square. To end up to the next dimension, you draw the square again and you connect all of the nodes and you end up with a cube. So to get to the fourth physical dimension, um, you draw the cube again and then you connect all of the nodes in the cube together with lines. And that's, that's uh, if anybody ever seen one of those, what they look like? So that would be, that's also called a tesseract. It's been called that, you've seen this, tesseract? So a tesseract is one way to understand what a fourth uh, dimension in the physical plane would look like. Um, also, it's called a hypercube. And uh, in high school, we used to draw hypercubes and make them move. So we had an X, a Y, a Z dimension, but then we had a W dimension too, which it's hard to imagine because it's hard, to us, hard for us to see another uh, fourth physical dimension. So often when we talk about the fourth dimension, the most common belief is that the best reference for that is the, the idea of time. So, so instead of having a fourth physical dimension, you have three physical dimensions and one time dimension. So the time dimension would represent you know, movement or future and past. So, so that, that, does that make sense that you could see four dimensions being three physical dimensions and one time dimension? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one idea. There's many ideas. Now in the Mayan, in the Mayan calendar and in the Mayan system, they do refer to a second dimension of time. So there's different ways of thinking about the second dimension of time. Mm -hmm. And as our consciousness evolves, we will start noticing that time isn't linear. So, and I, and I believe that most of us are moving into another, another density, and we're gonna talk about that in a bit. But we're moving into another density where we, we're working in a nonlinear time consciousness where we can have instantaneous things happen. Uh, we can shift. Um, basically, time becomes very plastic and nonlinear. And, and then you can move further on and to talk about parallel lives. So, and in quantum mechanics, we do talk about there being 11 dimensions. So according to particle accelerator theory, and there's about five different schools that study particle accelerator ideas like string theories, there's five schools of string theory, but there's a commonality that there's 11 dimensions, or at least in, in the, what's up, what I've studied in quantum mechanics, there's different schools that have all agreed, yeah, it looks like there's about 11 dimensions. They look at these quarks that have to spin twice before they're the same quark. So there's little hints that give you ideas that there's other dimensions. So there's some commonality there, there's 11, but, and, and three time dimensions. So what does that look like? Who, who knows what that is? But I think when we look at the particle accelerators and look at quantum mechanics, it's basically giving us a map that we are so much more than we think we are. So all of that can get really, really complex. If you guys look at the handouts we're passing around, um, a lot of those handouts are referring to different modalities and different cultures and the way they look at different dimensions. So let's, let's now talk about, instead of dimensions, does anybody have any questions about dimensions at all? What's the difference between density and dimension? Okay, so yeah, so density, and there's a difference between density and dimension, but there's different schools of density. So in some ideas, like in the law of one, they talk about there being um, seven densities, or sometimes eight, where eight is the first density, again, where eight is God consciousness, oneness and nothingness at the same time. It's everything. Um, so density could be thought of as different frequencies. So frequencies of consciousness. So the first, yeah, let's, let's go into density. So the first density would kind of be like um, the pure physical. Like something that just is and it exists like a rock. Like, the, like something physical that doesn't appear to move, it exists in the form of consciousness that you would call first density, if that makes sense. So it's, it's that thing that, that just is, that doesn't change. So that's one way of thinking about first density. Now second density now involves 
sort of the time dimension in movement. So the second density, one way of thinking about it is, is um, the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom that isn't, doesn't have the ego yet. So it, it's, it, just, it just sort of is, but it also moves and it interacts. So moving and interacting, the way that plants you know, interact with the sun, the way that animals interact with each other. So it, there's, in all of these different theories that we, we evolve, our spiritual consciousness evolves through the, through the densities. And the, the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life really describes the physics of how that works. <laughs> which is really amazing when you look into it. So, now when you talk about third density, that's really, the consensus is that's where we live now. Third, third density is like where you are self-conscious. So you're self-aware, you're aware that you're aware of others being separate from you. Whereas in the second density, you're not so much aware that things are separate. You're not thinking that far, you're just being. You're just sort of like uh, existing res response to stimuli movement. Whereas, yes, third density is where we can see ourselves, where we have ego, where we believe that we're separate. So we're interacting and we have self-consciousness. So we have our ego. We uh, are concerned with physical things and needs. Um, is everybody familiar with the idea of these densities that I'm talking about? Yes? Yeah? I've never heard it. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really common New Age terminology now that we talk about densities. What's the other word? Well, another way to talk about third density is, is the, the, being in four dimensions. So you, so you have, talking about dimensions is a bit crude, that's why densities is a little more easier to understand. But, so third density would be like four dimensions. You're existing in four dimensions because you have time. <laughs> But also, third density involves the ego, so self-consciousness. You know, but but it is it is more a selfish kind of dimension, where we really believe if we were fully third density, which we're not, we're partly fourth density, and and we're part of every density really. But primarily, our frequencies of consciousness, where we are spiritually, will exist in a certain domain, which we'll call dimension. So we're, we're in third dimension, occasionally having four dimensional or fourth density experiences a lot. So fourth density is, is where we start realizing that we're all connected, that I am you, that we, there's something connecting us together. Um, also, fourth density would be when we start experiencing things where time cuts out or time goes faster or shorter or faster and shorter at the same time. And I know the more I talk to people, I'm realizing that more and more people are starting to experience time not being linear, or at least there being some kind of strange, strange effects, strange synchronicities. When you immediately think about something, you immediately see it. And this is happening to me all the time. And I know it's happened to a lot of people where you immediately think of somebody, or the, and they phone, phone you, or they text you, or you just have a feeling in your body of something that relates to another person. Like, so yesterday, I was thinking about my hometown, and, and here I am at the Waldorf School, and then suddenly I see two people independently that come from my, that came from my hometown area and a music festival. So it's like, I'm starting to see these synchronicities where I'll suddenly see somebody when I feel something. So that's, that's a fourth density experience. That's, that's fourth density. So, Fourth density, when you start existing more and more in fourth density, that means you're having more and more synchronicities. It means you're realizing that you're not limited to your physical body. So believing you're limited to your physical body, complete in, the, in that absolute ego, that I'm physical body absolutely, and I'm a pure atheist because I don't believe in anything other than what's here, that's, that's con that vibration of consciousness is third density. So fourth density is that you start realizing that, first of all, death isn't really real. That's one experience. Another experience is that you're eternal and there's something beyond this physical dimension. So that, in the mind culture, could be called the second dimension of time, which could also be called direct synchronicity. Now, that's a partial fourth density experience, having psychic 
um, you, you can feel each other's feelings. So, and you, when you're in your fourth density, you start feeling when there's something going on on the planet or when somebody you know is hurting, that's your consciousness is in fourth density to be able to experience that. So, so I know that right now, our, our whole society is progressing very quickly, exponentially, and part of the fourth density, we're, it's, it's inevitable that we evolve, even if we try not to, even if we're doing our best to be very negative and uh, manipulative. So, so third, third density, uh, there's so much to talk about with third density. Third density is the realm of choice. Where you, because in third and second density, there isn't really choice, um, because you just are and you're experiencing. Third density, you have choice, so you have karma enter. And third density, like mostly, I'm um, like planet Earth, is very much third density for the most part, with other beings living in higher densities. But it's about choice. It's about, um, and choice has results. So there's karma. So there's, um, you, you get to make choice, you get to do beautiful, incredible things, but you can also choose to get your energy and survive through manipulating other people. And that's a, that's a valid third density choice, is to, I want to be a CEO, and I want to be a CEO of, and, it, and I don't care about ethics, because that's not the way that that game plays. I can manipulate people, I can start a corporation that enslaves a whole entire nation, and I can use the International Monetary Fund as my you know, tool to manipulate and create slavery, so that's, that's, a, that's a valid way that you can operate in the third density. In fourth density, you, the, the law of karma happens very quickly. So when you manipulate somebody else, you will feel it come right back to you, so it's not it's not going to be a, a fun choice for you, or it'll it'll be harder to manipulate in the fourth density, because you because you feel everyone's feelings on this planet, and when you're in fourth density, it's not like you're only beginning on the path um, of the awakening of your consciousness. So fourth density, you're still seeing other beings in the world. And you're still reacting to them. You're still, but you you are empathic. It's basically an empathic density, and you know that time isn't linear in that sense. So, any questions about fourth density or any other analogies? Whoever's familiar with fourth density. Where does awareness come in this? Where does awareness come in this? Yeah. Well, awareness is a, a, awareness is inevitable in fourth density. So we can't not be aware. So we can't pretend to be ignorant. Everybody is transparent. So you can't have a private thought, as scary as that sounds. So, in fourth density. So there's no private thoughts. So that's, and that's actually part of why moving from third density to fourth density is probably the hardest shift out of all of them. Because, because all of your past lives and all of your, everything that you need to heal and process has to come onto the table to shift into fourth density. So that's, that's because we are shifting into fourth density, that's why we're seeing so much craziness happening right now. <coughs> all of the craziness has to surface. It needs to play itself out because it knows it, the time is running short. And so things are speeding up. And we, it's like a spinning top. The way that nature works is that things are always evolving, always evolving. And um, with the freedom of choice in the third density, you could, you could decide not to shift into the fourth density. But once the inevitable shift in the fourth density happens, um, you can either choose to ca catch on to that next octave, or you can be absolutely persistent that there's no way I want to be anything to do with this. And so somehow your, your soul will choose to have a physical death experience and stay into third density in a different parallel world or a different parallel earth where that earth stays in third density. Whereas if you catch up with what's natural, you're going to shift into fourth density. 
Yeah. It's, it's almost like you have to try not to. As long as you're conscious and aware and empathic, you're going to shift into fourth density. That's what my experience tells me. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to say that like when we're talking about consciousness and being in different densities, it's not that we would necessarily be in that density at all times, right? Like we, yes. like with consciousness, you can have a moment of like understanding, but that doesn't mean you've then shifted like at all moments into fourth density. But we probably yes. move back and forth between like yes. different moments. Yes, exactly. So parts of our consciousness will be in fourth, is in fourth density, and actually parts are in fifth density and sixth and seventh. <coughs> so we're in all of those. Um, but yeah, even when we're in fourth density, we can still we can still choose to make to we can still choose negative, and can still choose limiting third density consciousness. It's never it's never beyond us to be able to choose that. It's always a choice. But being in that fourth density, we wouldn't want we probably wouldn't want to. Um, so the idea of there being no private thoughts can seem scary, but once we've moved through and healed and forgiven ourselves for everything that we thought that was unlovable, and that's part of third debt moving into fourth is clearing, and the shift to fourth density is very akin to what's described as um, Judgment Day or um, the, the, the Apocalypse. So the Apocalypse, meaning the shadow is revealed, is, is what the origin of the word, shadow being revealed. So you have your own personal apocalypse, which is like, the undoing and the exposing of everything that you wanted to hide. Mm -hmm. But um, through empa empathy, so being empathic, you don't want to hide it. You wouldn't want to hide anything in fourth density because you're moving into a more loving, harmonious vibration that doesn't believe in punitive justice, that knows there's a cosmic law. You don't have to worry about creating a punitive justice system because everything is already a cosmic law. It's natural, happening on its own. Karma is doing its job as it always does. But, and also, when we, if we have a negative thought in fourth density, it just it comes back to us right away. Um, so maybe you want to play that game in fourth density, but it, it will hurt, and it probably be no fun. And, you know. Did what person think of all this, or were there several people that agreed on it and thought of it? The idea, Where did it come from? So the idea of densities are you talking about? Or, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it seems to be all, the, all these different spiritual New Age Eastern traditions and even in a lot of ancient uh, native traditions, this all seems to have a commonality. That's why I like to talk about densities because there's more commonality in the idea of density than there are in dimensions. Mm -hmm. So... Um, does anybody have any other analogies for what I'm describing as fourth density? Well, what about sleep? Lemurians. Oh. The Lemurians? Sleep. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Experience. 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 It just happens. Right. I think our soul evolves over lifetimes. And right. So the idea, this is interesting. So two interesting questions. Um, the idea of sleeping. So I think in third density, sleeping serves a a huge function to to get us out of what we know isn't real to be able to in the dream time we can have metaphysical experiences where our soul our higher self gets to play out and remember that we're a, we're more than this physical body so one of the major functions of sleeping in the, the third density is we probably don't need as much sleep as we think we do but our physical body needs sleep but more than that, in third density, our spiritual body needs uh, to process all the illusions of what of this Maya consciousness, of this world that is tricking us because everything we see, there's still this weight that we think that we're separate from each other, but we're not. But in the dream world, a lot of that can be healed and, and relieved. So I think dream in third density serves a huge function um, to bring us back to our soul to our soul family and to our to remember who we truly are. Um, and to process energy that we couldn't process during waking, uh, during the normal waking state. Where in fourth density, dreaming, I'm sure, you st I, I don't know what that is like, but I'm sure dreaming is you're dreaming in the higher dimensions beyond that. And when you're in, so you probably don't need to sleep as much in the fourth density 
uh, consciousness because there is you've already worked out so much karmic stuff that you don't need to deal with that in your third density dream life. I was just thinking that there is this shift to higher consciousness, but even in when we're not, we are. Oh, even when we're not consciously aware of shifting, you wake up and you're in a foul mood, you didn't sleep well, you don't like anybody, and you don't like anything. <laughs> right. Then you sit down and meditate or whatever you do, and all of a sudden you're in another plane. You, yes. you love humanity, you yes. love life, you're grateful. Yes. So I think that even in the course of a, a day, we can... Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can shift. So this, I don't think it's clear that we're in a dimension, as yeah. long as we have different moods and and our past comes back in every once in a while and says, "I am real," <laughs> you know. This, yes. So yeah, I think we're we're moving, and yeah. there's also a dimension that I'm aware of because, and that is that we can travel right. without going any without moving our bodies. Yes. Can, so I can go and. <clears throat> You're in Ontario. I can go and visit you. Yes. And uh, and we can even be aware of of this if we're yeah. Yes. Th that, that that's an aspect of fourth density as well. But I like what you said, when you are tuning in and meditating, you connect to your heart chakra, or that center of your being, the core star. You actually are God consciousness. You are experiencing all dimensions if you can get yourself into that state. And we're noticing that it's becoming easier and easier to meditate. Um, it's easier and easier to access that state more than it was 10 years ago. So for the, for the collective, it's easier because we are shifting. Because we are shifting into the fourth density. Because I still have this, I'll say something. Yeah. Um, there's, um, there's also this thing about going into, into the mystery where er creation you know, we're new life, we're, and we can be part of it. And to be in there is an incredibly creative uh, yes. and uh, exhilarating. Yes. And so I won't so, say so yeah, else. that's <laughs> yeah, that's right. So in fourth density, you're still not you're not a you're not really embodied the experience of God consciousness. You're still on one step. Um, so you're still you're you're still have this psychic thing where you can feel everybody what they're feeling, but but you don't quite you quite haven't embodied that we're that that there is just oneness that this world doesn't exist. So the four dense fourth density there's still a karmic uh, emotional attachment to the people. There's still a karmic bond to all the people because there's a lot of work to do still. Yeah, I bring forth an yeah. interesting question, mundane question concept of psychopathy, psych psychological psychopathy, yeah. which uh, uh, taken to, to the extreme, yeah. uh, a psychopath has no empathy. Right. What you said in the fourth dimension, you have to have the ability to empathize, is that yeah. correct? Yes. So where, how does that enter the picture, Yes. A psychopath? So, so okay, that was a good question because um, somebody who has learned to survive, to, to achieve love through manipulation, now, sociopath, psychopath is sort of an extreme, there's, a, there's sort of like a, a gradient. Someone on, uh, somebody who operates on that level is purely learned how to find love through manipulating other people. Um, so that's all third density manipulation. Um, that's not going to work in fourth density. And in fact, shifting into that higher frequency, you don't have a choice but to confront what trauma it is that caused you to believe that you couldn't be loved, that you needed to manipulate other people for. So to shift into that higher vibration, it's inevitable. Either, either somebody who operates in that dimension isn't ready to psychologically to make the shift they need to keep in that third density for a spiritual reason. They need to keep, they need to keep reincarnating, for lack of a better word, or repopulating in that experience until that's healed. So that's someone who is in that operation. There's a lot of energy that goes into manipulating other people. So all of that energy can be redirected. So it, one thing that's really amazing is that slingshot effect. When you've been 
putting so much of your energy and life force into manipulating. That's, I mean, that's, that's a valid way <laughs> to live in third density, and that's because it's a choice. Everybody has a choice. But that energy can be immediately shifted if one is willing to. Someone who, we know people who have been in the corporate environment and exploited, 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 became incredibly wealthy. And there's a lot of people in that, who fit in that realm, who have made huge spiritual shifts. And I'm meeting people who are, you know, have lived in that realm of the corporate world and where manipulation was all, all good. It's okay to do that because there's a sense of classism that I'm the righteous class. So it's okay to manipulate other people. They're poor, that's their fault. So there's that. But imagine all the energy it took to, to manipulate and to get to where they are. So there's a, that energy is valid and that energy can be immediately shifted. So what I'm saying is that somebody who's a psychopath has an opportunity with all that energy that they use to shift into, a, into the light. They can have a despondency. They can have a great shift. It's very possible. And we, there are examples of people on this planet who were absolutely on that dimension of pure manipulation who have had a spiritual shift. Could you name one? Um, I, ca I can name, yeah. I mean, it's not a public figure. Yeah, do you know the person who wrote the book called Deep Ecology? No. Okay. Um, th so there was... The a public figure that we would know that would qualify you to, to, have, to having been a psychopath. No, <laughs> so, to, to having been... Oh, so not. Actually, yet. do you have any... Well, the, the, the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, was a true story. The Wolf of Wall Street was a true yeah, story? Yeah, so okay. it ends the story after all these horrible manipulation, manipulative things yep. he did. He, he turned... Yeah. So I have I have um, friends I have friends that have had that have been in that corporate world and made the shift. Um, so there there are examples of the guy that was the CEO of Goodyear. He was all about. He was at a. He remembers being at a board meeting where they were deciding, hey, if we use child slave labor, then we will definitely get a leading advantage, and that was a. But nobody feels responsible really for those decisions when it's in a corporate board. Like you're you're having a board meeting with all the all of the people on your board, the shareholders and the stock shareholders are like, oh, we should do that, and it's okay to use child slavery because we're giving them jobs, because um, they're already a poor class and maybe we're making their lives better. So there's all this justification. Um, so the guy that Goodyear, um, he was actually on a movie called The Corporation. Everybody watched that movie. Yeah. That's yeah. a good movie where they yeah. do have an example of somebody who didn't make that shift. Yeah. Where uh, um, Howard Lyman, who was the, I think, second largest cattle rancher in the world, he made a shift um, because he had a life or death choice because he was going to die um, within a month. He was given a month to live. And he made a great shift and discovered deep empathy. So those shifts can happen. So, but some people, you don't need to, because we're in the freedom of choice, we don't need to shift into fourth, we can choose to reincarnate, and our soul will choose to have a death experience, for example. Can you um, speak to the analogy of the Buddha and Bodhisattva to illustrate? Okay, yes. So, how would I describe that? Um, so, there's, a, there's another step of, there's another shift that we can have from fourth density to fifth density. And the fifth density, there are, there are beings on the planet who exist in fifth density. How about defining the fifth density? Sure, yeah. We jump from the fourth to the fifth. That's right. Well, that's what I'm trying to describe here. Um, so, so. <laughs> So fifth density, one way to think about fifth density is where you have a realization that there is no separation. There isn't a separation. Um, where in fourth density you still see, but you have, you can sense other people separate, but have, feel their feelings. Fifth density, you realize there isn't a separation. So, so, so in other words, you have become conscious enough to realize that you're not really a physical body at all. And you can have... Um, you can experience the shift where you move from one dimension to another. 
So one of the fifth density experiences would be when, I think some of us have this sometimes when you have a deja vu and, and you experience that this whole parallel universe, there's whole parallel experience already happened, but not in this dimension, in another parallel universe. So there are bleeds through, bleed throughs that happen from other parallel universes when you start having some fifth density consciousness. And one of the experiences um, is called the Mandela effect, where you're starting to have memories bleed through from other parallel dimensions as well. So that would be a fifth, dens a fifth density type of experience. Has anybody had an experience where they shifted into a parallel universe that wasn't the normal one where different things happen or have you had memories bleed in to this uh, dimension from another dimension? Has anybody had that? From a different lifetime? Yeah, for, for, yeah, from different lifetimes or from different parallel universes happening at the same time where you have a deja vu and you're like, all this stuff happened already. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's a partial bleed through from fifth density type of experience. Yeah, we've had that several times. Yes, so we, we're all having experiences from all these different densities. Um, but somebody who's fully embodied that realizes that there is no separation. But there's still still a karmic bond to the collective consciousness. There's still a need to be connected with the beings on this planet. And there's still a karmic role in you being part of the great shift. And that would be, uh, and sometimes that's the purpose of the Bodhisattva, is someone who's already moved to the higher dimensions and then consciously chooses to come back. I mean, I think in a way all of us are a different level of Bodhisattva, a lot of people have chosen to come here to experience this, but then there's the ones that have fully consciously need, know that they need to come back to be a light, to be a light in this world. So, like Ram Das's guru would be somebody who, who's like knows that what's his name? Maharaji. Maharaji. So Maharaji is a perfect example of somebody who is in that fifth density or higher. Who who knows? But that fifth density, knowing that everything is one. <coughs> and that the body isn't real, and you can have spontaneous manifestation. So like um, Zai Baba, somebody like that, who instantly manifests something. So that's someone who's mastered the software of the matrix and realizes it's not real, but can also phase shift from one place in the world to another place and rematerialize somewhere. Sort of like uh, Carlos Castaneda's uh, guru who did that, right? Someone who can shift. That's 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 the, the way that the consciousness operates is that it accesses the software that creates the matrix, the, the simulation that we're living in. So someone who's has highness consciousness to know that they're they can they're not controlled by that, but they can sh shift the software and re relocate. Yeah. So spontaneous re relocation of your of your form that you know isn't real, it's like a hologram, but you can move anywhere on the planet instant, instantly. So that would be, that would be operating in the, in the fifth density. Um, and the, 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 this is all, like a lot of stuff I'm talking about, this is just what I got intuitively. Uh, and I've been talking about this for a while, just feeling it through, and it's more parts of this are coming to me. And does anybody have any questions about what fifth density might be or any comments? To me, it seems like it's a higher, higher level. Conscious, yeah, it, it's a it's a higher it's a higher vibration. Yeah. Uh, so all of these are paths, steps towards oneness, steps towards God, mm -hmm. steps towards true unity and and awareness uh, of God consciousness. Well, one concept you're not uh, addressing, uh, for me anyway, is yeah. the concept of evil incarnate. Okay, in the right. early, in the early Christian. Uh, the early Christian ethic uh, entailed uh, the incarnation of evil on earth. Yes. How does evil uh, enter into the picture? Can they uh, can they uh, go from one density up to the fourth, fifth densities, for example, or are they limited to the third density, and why? Mm. See, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> my feeling is that. You know, so the reason I ask that... Yeah, there's some is, truth to that. It, it appears to me that you have to have the empathy, the spiritual aptitude yes. to reach the higher planes. 
That's the reason I asked. The and then, uh, yeah, and that's not always true. Um, there's, yeah, that's that's a really that see that gets into some really interesting questions about what it, what is evil. So one of the examples would be um, beings that are manipulative that have the ability to work in some of those higher dimensions. Um, <laughs> people do talk about the Archons or the Illuminati or um, sort of beings that, that are still parasitic, that they still manipulate, but have the ability to <coughs> sh shape shift. Sure, like, so, do you have any comment on that, Patricia? Well, I'm just interested in the book, and I'm sorry I've forgotten yeah. the author's name, Power versus Force. Yes. And that guy talks about the various David levels David Hawkins, of yes. Oh. And until we get to a vibratory level of about 140 and have courage, yes. we're not going to be ready to move on. So yes. I hate to say it's another use of time, but maybe that's a way to understand it. With time, who knows how many rounds this needs. Yes, yeah, so that's the thing is like I think that idea of evil or manipulation, um, th there's, that gets into a lot, but there are, there's definitely aspects of beings that would be able to manipulate using parts of fourth and fifth density, uh, having tools in those densities to use for manipulation, but not fully embodying that density completely, but are able to use it to manipulate. Um, the thing about the those beings can only manipulate truly people that are that our egos are stuck in third density because they're they're afraid of death. So if you're afraid of death, there is something to manipulate. Um, that's, that's an interesting response. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So we we go uh, up and down in the Yeah, we go up and down and uh, we, we don't well, I mean in a lifetime like right now for instance. So like this is this is all just exploring these ideas and I would like it to be interactive. I know we're running out of time. But I want to just talk about sixth density a little bit. The what what kind of, what came to me about what sixth density is, and it is you are fully aware that this world never existed, and that you're not tied to the karmic bonds of this of the lower densities. So even in fourth and fifth density, there's still a really important spiritual need for you to be connected with the collective consciousness beings in this planet realm. So a being who exists in the, in the six or higher dimensions would be something like an archangel or avatar being that recognizes that this world never existed. They're already beyond all time. So the world never existed and there's no, and they resolved all karma from the lower dimensions. So there's sort of a sense of oneness, um, a universal mind. And I know in a lot of traditions, each of these different levels are connected with, like for example, like fourth density would be connected to the sun, fifth would be connected to the great sun, or the, uh, the great sun, which would be Alcyon or Sirius in a lot of traditions. In the Vedic tradition, it's Alcyon. In some of the other traditions, native traditions, the Sirius is the sun of the sun. And sun represents a certain level of consciousness, the sun of the sun. The sun that our sun orbits is another conscious. I don't want to lose anybody, but I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> that there's actual cosmological analogies that refer to each of these densities. So um, fifth, fifth density or sixth density would refer to galactic level consciousness, whereas seventh would be universal consciousness. So in, in the Veda tradition, galaxies are considered beings. So like an actual a highly evolved being is a galaxy. A very evolved being is a sun, or a, or a great sun. So there is a consciousness, and some people who have had the out-of-body near-death experience go into the sun, or go into the galaxy. Or And I know that in the in some of the Vedic texts, they talk about when you ascend, you, your physical body, some people go to the moon, and some people go to Saturn or Jupiter. And if you look at the alchemical traditions, a lot of people have a connection with Jupiter and Saturn because those are considered higher density beings 
they look like objects to us, but they're really a form of consciousness. And they're gateways, stargates. So, um, they're what? what like uh, gateways, uh, stargates. stargates. What about Sirius? You know so Sirius is considered a, a great sun. Um, so Sirius is where, you know, that's a, we, you don't have time to get into that. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot going on with Sirius. And the Alcyon, which is the center star of the Palladian system. It's got about 10,000 suns that we know of. Um, but yes, moving into the higher dimensions. Have you got a recommendation for a basic reading? Like if somebody... <laughs> 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 got 10 years? I've got, I've got about you know, 15 videos right now bookmarked that relate to all of this stuff that I could almost post the bookmarks through uh, an email. Maybe we could get our website activated by putting a sequential set of well, that would be starting cool, uh, some things. I mean, it's that great. That's a good idea. Yeah. That would be cool. Um, we could get to use our website. So how to, how to conclude all of this. So moving into these higher, this is all part of the karmic process of, of, of healing and growing. So as we as we move into each, we don't lose our identity. We're not. There's this common misbelief in New Age traditions that if we move into these higher densities, we lose our individuality. That's that's not right. That's not what it, that's not what it's about. In fact, you maintain this individuality, and in fact, it can be more enhanced. So there's still individuation in these in a lot of these higher densities. Do you maintain your female maleness? Um. Yeah. You. Yes. You. Yes. So like, yeah, it becomes a choice in the higher dimensions. It becomes a choice. In fact, the other beings have way beyond since evolved the need to have a physical body. So like um, beings from Elcyon, and I, I'm getting this stuff through all these different sources. So some beings have become more plasma, like you see balls of light moving around, uh, nymphs, gnomes, those little beings that make the crop circles, the little balls of light. Consciousness can evolve beyond the need to even have a gender or even a physical body. So, I mean, it's all up to our imagination, really. I mean, where, where do we go with this stuff? But the whole idea is, is to really come back to our remembering of our oneness. So, and, and in, the, in the tree of life, we go through the process again and again. It's, it's sort of like a torus. So that, that tree of life that you saw there, um, that from the Kabbalah, is an incredible system. I would strongly recommend anybody just look at that and just type in the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life. Spirit Science is what I would recommend. Mm. Uh, Spirit Science has a uh, 20-part series on that. It, it will really help you get really understanding what the Tree of Life and the Kabbalah is about. But it does explain <coughs> that, yes, once we re reach God consciousness, we come back around the Taurus and reincarnate. And it's like, it, it, it's a choice. So, yeah. There's also a book out called The Tiger's Fang by Paul Twitchell. What's it called? The Tiger's Fang. And he, it's a story of uh, this t Tibetan monk and him go through the various planes. And he discusses in each chapter what, what people have to learn at each different wow. level. Wow, cool. Wow, see that's, that exactly, that's Could the kind of thing that, that would be perfect that for this talk. Say it again. Yeah, say it again with the tiger's Okay, the name of it is called the Tiger's Fang. The Tiger's Fang, Fang. Yeah. Tiger's Fang. F-A-N-G. Oh, is that Tiger's Tiger. Tiger. Yeah. T A or T I? No, tiger. The animal. Tiger. 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 And he takes him to the various yeah. planes. <laughs> and he talks about there's this being called the cow Nigeron, which okay. is essentially the devil. But he's the reason he's in place is to to help educate us because he. Yes. Could, and then then you go on anyways. It's, yes, you do need the negative aspect to evolve. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, Anyways, it's sort of complicated. Well, yeah, it's, that's part of that's part of the process is to have the friction, the duality. So people that are very negative, they get higher and higher. Well, the the How can you understand light unless you've seen darkness? How right. can you enjoy right. a nice warm spring unless you've seen winter? Right. Yeah. So we are. There's, there's the there's the polarity there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, if you deny seeing winter, then you don't progress. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you need that negative aspect 
And in, and in the ultimate sense, when you're spiritually tuned in, like the Buddha said, everything is perfect just the way it is, you see the Illuminati and the Archon trying to create their matrix of control over people. They don't really exist, but they do as long as they're causing you friction so that you can evolve. Um, so I want to say in closing that it's inevitable for us to evolve. Um, we can choose. But we have to try hard to not evolve. <laughs> and uh, as long as we're positively oriented, then we will just naturally, it's nature, we will naturally make these steps. Like, um, so I, I sense that the way things are going, the internet was created as part of our fourth density to bring us together to, so that we realize we're all connected. So all the things that are happening right now are an acceleration of us moving into fourth density. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's inevitable. And, and I just want to say thank you, everybody, for coming and, and yeah. sharing in this talk. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dan. For and, um, I think we'll have, have to have you back again. So I'm going to ask.